beast mode, son. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. That'll work. <laughs> welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the boat gang. Got the Sonic Wake 36 uh, V2 on the freaking block. All right. Um, look, my last run out with this boat, I actually broke... A prop shaft. Okay, I, actually, I broke two prop shaft. I broke the original V2 shaft and I broke the replacement V1 shaft I put in the boat. Okay, um, I'm running an offshore electrics 150 in this boat, stock motor 6S, actually a big boy 6S with some big pitchy propellers. Okay, uh, so yeah, we're gonna be installing an upgraded zip kits. 0.187 cable and I'm up upgrading the stock servo to a upgrade DS servo okay uh, I use these servos in all my boats I like them they're good they're cheap and they work all right got a metal horn so uh, let's get to it let's get to it big B with Ironclad RC So I'm basically just upgrading my servo because I want more power. You know, uh, the DS servos got, got a little more torque. And my opinion, it's a little quicker than the stock servo. Okay. Um, last time I had the boat out, like I said, I lost my prop shaft. And <laughs> my servo horn actually got stripped out somehow. <laughs> so so we're, we're going to upgrade. All right. So I got the stock servo out. Okay. It was just four screws. Boom, 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 boom. You're, you got it out. Unplug it from the, the receiver box, okay? So now all I gotta do is take these four screws out and put the mount on our upgraded servo. I like these DS servos. I, I use them in pretty much all my rigs, everything. Boats, cars, they're good servos, all right? Um, they come with servo horns, okay? An assortment of servo horns and mounting screws for like $16 or $18, depending on where you get it at. It also comes with this aluminum servo horn, Okay, it's actually a nice horn, but to get this horn to work with the stock easy connector, steering rod connector, you're actually going to have to grind off this little flanged area right here. You see that little flanged area? You need to grind it off so it looks like this. All right, and what I normally do is drill the threads. They're threaded. Okay, it's threaded in those two big holes. I'll usually drill those threads out and back it up with a nut. You see what I'm saying? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drill those out and mount up my servo. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to video. It's pretty easy. And then I'll, I'll cut back in whenever I go to install it into the boat. I'm trying to save some time, you guys. The drill bit I use to drill it out for the stock easy connector is 2.93 millimeters. Okay, 3 millimeters. Drill it out so your easy connector will just slide right into your servo arm, no play, like so. A little bit of Loctite, and put our easy connector right back on our our servo arm. That Loctite will just kind of lock that servo, uh, that easy connector down, so it don't back off, and we can set the the tension on it. Okay, you want it to be able to spin freely. All right. Uh, so that's done. Okay, three millimeter drill bit done. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy here undone. All right, so we're gonna put our new servo in. You just want to make sure you take your old servo out, put the new servo in the same way the old one come out. All right, like so, and your screws. I don't even bother to put those little rubber pieces in. I, I don't even bother. I'm, I'm sure somebody's like, oh, you gotta put them in there. It's a shock absorber. Blah 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 blah. But I don't even care. Okay, so I got my, my, my battery plugged in. I made sure my steering trim is at zero. All right, it's at zero. <clears throat> got my servo bolted in. All right, and we're going to put the servo horn in its up and down position. Okay, so you don't want to install it there. You want to try to get it to where it's straight up and down. So you get full throw left and right. 
all right about right there looks good okay so our, our rudder is actually cocked to one side all right so what you want to do to alleviate that is just push this steering rod into your easy connector all right i might have to work it back and forth because i actually have some old loctite on it so let's see if i can get it worked in here okay so Hopefully you guys can see the rudder and the servo. All right, now it's cocked the other way. So we're gonna actually try to get it in line with the keel of the boat, the bottom of the boat, the keel, the bottom. All right, uh, mine looks like it's in line. It looks like it's um, on the flat spot. There's actually a little flat spot on this steering linkage right here. You just wanna make sure you got your flat spot and your grub screw in the right place and a little bit of Loctite. I just put some Loctite in the hole. That extra Loctite will actually kind of, you know, hold the, help hold the steering rod in place if the grub screw were to back out. Okay, I, I think steering is an important part of your boat. <laughs> so you definitely don't want, you know, your, your grub screw backing out or the steering rod moving back and forth on your easy connector here. So I just kind of put a little extra loctite in there you can heat it up you know when you have to remove it just kind of add a little bit of heat uh, you know i'd rather be play it safe than it come loose in the middle of a turn and in my case i would hit the water fountain or something and destroy my boat all right so i'm just playing it safe and don't forget to put loctite on that little screw that goes on the servo horn I got Loctite on this grub screw here. I got Loctite on this screw. Loctite on those two screws that adjust the tension on the servo arm itself. I didn't put Loctite on the screws going into plastic because it will actually disform and misshape your plastic over time. So don't Loctite anything going into composites or plastics. Well, plastic composite. All right. Um, all this is good. I didn't mess with that. So let's check her out here much faster wow way faster than a stock servo all right here then the stock servo okay um actually i need to hook my cooling back up okay that's good to go good to go good to go all right you guys so let's get started on the flex cable all right i got two flex cables here i just made an order to zip kits um i got a 0.187 i got two of them one for the sonic wake and one for the velez or my delta force 35 my delta force 35 cables seen better days it's like compressed the cables compressed i've had it in my boat for like a year and a half so i'm actually going to show you guys a really simple way to install your cable all right, uh, this, like I said, this cable's from Zipkits. There's their information right there, zipkits.com, and their phone number. Okay, I also got this Bob Smith Industries 15-minute uh, epoxy foam. All right, so a lot of times when you get a cable, all right, this is just a 3 16 0.187 cable, common cable, all right, uh, and it don't have a drive dog slit, which I actually like. Okay, that allows me... To position my drive dog wherever I want it on the shaft. Okay, so we're going to have to cut a keyway for the grub screw and the drive dog. Figure out where to put the drive dog. And then we need to cut it to length. Okay, so what I do with my flex cable. Alright, I put, I put my, my drive dog on. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll, is I'll find like the stock propeller. It's got a short hub. Okay, I'll, I'll position my drive dog on my shaft to where... Uh, the threads end at the at the hub on the propeller okay and then i'll kind of cinch down my drive dog all right you guys see that so when i put my nut on here i won't have to put a spacer in okay the reason i'm leaving my drive my mine long i mean i'm leaving mine long because i run some of these like abc and oxygen marine high pitch high rake propellers so what I do is I'll put the high rake propeller, a long hub propeller on, and I'll screw my nut in. Okay, so I've actually, uh, my threads is too long here. You guys see that? So what I'm going to do is kind of split the difference. Okay, I'm going to slide my drive dog back. All right, put the short hub prop on, make sure 
I'm gonna have plenty of threads so I don't have to put a spacer on. Put my long hub propeller on. Okay. I have enough threads on my on my on my prop shaft with a short propeller and a long propeller. All right, because I run all kinds of different props on my boat. I I, not, I don't just run one prop. I run several. So I want to make sure that I have enough enough threads to tighten it down. And I just bottomed this bullet nut out, so I'm actually going to back it off two turns, okay, and push my, my prop up on the bullet nut and tighten it down, all right, unscrew it, make sure I got plenty of threads, I'm going to put the other propeller back on, okay, and then I'll mark it, make sure I have enough threads to hold the big prop on, that's the longest held propeller I own, all right, that should be enough threads to hold that bad boy on, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my magic marker, so I'm just going to mark around my drive dog, okay, that's that's basically where my drive dog is going to sit. And then I'll take my drive dog off. Before I do, I'm actually going to kind of eye where the grub screw is and put a mark where I'm going to put my flat spot. Okay, you guys see that? All right, so we got that prepped up. We know where our drive dog is going to be. Now, I actually got two. Actually, I have three different drive dogs I use for my boats. Depending on what I'm doing, what what strut, stinger I'm using, what propeller I'm using, I use a, a large drive dog, a small drive dog, and a tapered drive dog, which I don't think I have one in here. It's on my boat at the moment. <clears throat> they have a tapered drive dog. They got a tapered drive dog like this, and they got a tapered drive dog where the taper is actually on the dog part of the drive dog. <clears throat> Um, just kind of, I like to try to match it up according to the strut I'm using or the propeller I'm using for that, for that particular day. All right. So, uh, so we got it marked. Okay. We got it marked. And what I, what I'm going to do is you could use anything for this. You can use a wire. Okay. You could use a wire. In my case, I'm using a piece of fiberglass rod. I got a piece of carbon fiber rod that I could stick in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this fiberglass rod stick it in in the in the stinger make sure it goes all the way into the drive dog and i'm going to mark it it's pushed all the way up it's basically butted up on the motor shaft it won't go any farther okay so i'm going to mark it all right so we got that mark uh i'm just showing you guys a different way I, i've showed you i've shown you several ways to do this you know in the past this is just another way okay I try to change it up on you guys. And then we're gonna put it on the mark. All right. And measure out on our cable. Right there. That's where we're gonna cut it. My drive dog. Okay. Boom. And boom. Like I said, I'm gonna cut it a little bit long. I'm human. Okay, I'm human. I got my cable in my vise. Okay. The good side's not in the vise. The, the side I'm cutting off is in the vise. Just gonna use a cutoff wheel. All right, kind of a grinding wheel, cut off wheel deal, and slowly cut the, the cable, okay? All right, once you get it, once you get it cut, it's gonna look something like that. You just wanna kinda clean it up. You know what I'm saying? Put it on that wheel and just kinda round it off. Look something like that. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go solder the end of it, okay? All right, got it cut off. Got it cleaned up there, rounded, so it slides into our collet nice and smooth. We're going to check the, the cut here. Uh, I went ahead and cut it to length. I, I didn't leave it long, okay? Um, I may. I may actually cut this one long and have a short cable, okay? Uh, my Delta Force cable is actually like an uh, inch and a half shorter than this cable. So uh, what I want to do one day is actually uh, have two cables at the pond with me or at the speed run spot. Unscrew, like run the boat with the stinger in its short position and then unscrew it and run the boat with it extended in a long position. Actually change my cable out at the pond and just kind of 
watch the difference see if we could tell a difference so I'm actually going to use um, this is a socket a half inch socket flathead half inch socket that I filled with solder okay I'm gonna heat this up and we'll clean the cable dip the cable in this so we have uh, a nice finished cable in so it doesn't uh, like fray you know All right. so I'm just gonna put this little socket in my vise here we're gonna get the torch and heat it up now this is just electrical solder and there's probably a better solder for this uh, this is just a common home big box store electrical solder that I've been doing it with and it actually works pretty good um, actually works really good and I just heat it up okay and we'll actually prep up the cable while we're heating it we'll kind of heat the cable up dip it in flux okay that'll kind of clean the cable up it's a brand new cable it shouldn't have any oil on it all right uh, if it does have grease or oil on it use rubbing alcohol or mineral spirits to get the oil off before you you do this okay um, probably get a little better contact if we just rough it up just a little bit here before we dip it need a rag to wipe the flux and solder off with you don't want it to build up too much okay All right, so you basically you basically dip it, dip it, wipe it right off. Okay, cool it down just a little bit with your with your flux, wipe it, dip it, wipe it immediately. Got all the lights set up over here, so I dipped it like three times. I flexed it, dipped it in the solder, and wiped it off. All right, and it actually turned out really nice. Best to do this with a new cable, but it can be done with older cables. Sometimes it takes a little work little cleaning to get the solder to stick all right so let's make sure it goes in our cable in our collet now you don't want to build up too much maybe three dips if it's if it's you know sticking good like this one maybe three dips and that's it okay make sure you wipe it off that's important sorry i'm repeating myself but if you uh if you dip it and you don't wipe it completely off okay it could uh build up on one side and you'll have like an out of whack cable it'll be vibrating real bad on you all right, so went in my collet good. We didn't put too much on there. All right, now we need to like cut our drive dog slit. So like I said, I left mine a little long so I could unscrew my, my stinger later on. All right, so I'm gonna basically file my drive dog slit right here. Okay, right where it's at. All right, you guys see that? So what I'm gonna do is hold my marker right over the drive dog grub screw okay we'll move my drive dog and mark it when you put your propeller and your nut on what happens is you screw your nut in if you have a, a really long slit that grub screw will slip on in the slit okay and when you put the nut on it will actually push your drive dog back onto your stinger or strut you feel me so you just want to basically cut your your slit the the width of your drive dog grub screw okay all right so just to save me some time i'm going to use my dremel i usually use a file and hand cut it So let's put our cable in the, sh the stinger here, and yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect, you guys. All right. So I'm actually going to use red Loctite for this. All right, you can use blue, but I use red on my drive dog. I don't mind a little bit of heat. Put a little heat on it, you know. And off camera, I'll unscrew my stinger base and all that. Get it ready for the speed run spot. I've been itching. I've been itching to get get a run in with this boat. I hadn't been able to do nothing with it because I didn't have a cable. All right, so we need to actually. I'm actually going to grind that grub screw down. All right, it's too long. You see how long it is? Okay, I'll probably break this cutoff wheel, but I don't care. 
going to grind it down. All right. See that? Make it flat. Reduces the height so it's not sticking out on the drive dog. Okay. And let's see how it fits in there now. I might need to widen my my slit for my drive dog grub screw here. You see that? I went bare minimum with it. I may need to like elongate it. Oh no, it fits in there. Yeah, it fits in there good. Alright, so that's her. I'm just going to put some red Loctite on it. We're done. Let's see how the propellers fit on there. Okay, we got plenty of threads to fit our nut on. The long hub propeller and we've got plenty of threads to hopefully, yep, get yeah, so that should fit on there without having to put a spacer on it. Uh, I, I usually just make spacers with an old nut, <clears throat> an old 3 16 nut that I just drill out the threads a little bit so it'll kind of fit on there that's what I use for a spacer so I shouldn't need one because I actually did all the measurements here so it should tighten right down on it and it does okay you guys see that now I can set the gap between my drive dog and my stinger barrel it's the nice thing about these stingers you can adjust oh okay so all right, so that's about the gap I want, you know, uh, with these big, bigger props, okay, I don't really run this prop on the boat, this is just for demonstration, but with these bigger props, you want a gap, and I may put a little bit more on it. Okay, about right there, maybe, you know, enough gap to put a 2.0 a millimeter Allen in between, okay? So we're done. We're done. All right. I got all my coolant to hook back up. My collet's on. I've got proper alignment to my collet with my stuffing tube. Nice, like smooth, no hiccups when you push your cable into the collet. Very important. All right. Um, my stinger drive dog gap is set perfect. All right. It's bottomed out on the motor shaft. Gives me some room for flex with these larger props. I uh, got my TFL stinger all screwed back in, loctited, put back on the boat. I've got, I actually put a, a clear silicone tube in that gap where my stinger's at. That will actually prevent water from getting in. Okay, um, she's done. She's done. That's basically how you change a servo, cut a cable, file your drive dog, set your gap uh for the sonic wake it kind of carries over to other boats but uh i hope you guys enjoyed the video sorry it was a long one just wanted to kind of go through the whole nine with you guys i get a lot of questions about this boat so i wanted to walk you through the whole the whole deal okay so we'll see you guys next time big b with anaclad rc don't forget to like comment subscribe and all that good good